How many hours have you spent on DXL, Mark, in your lifetime? <laughs> I don't know. It's hard to know, but a lot. A lot of time I spent looking at graphs and comparing one lens to another lens and a lot. There's, you know when it mostly happens? It's like real late at night when I'm obsessing over some gear purchase that's going to change my life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like I've definitely settled down on DxO Mark in the last couple of, of years because all the lenses have really kind of like leveled out. There's not that much of a difference between one right. lens and another lens. So it used to be a big deal, like when when lenses were getting sharper and sensors were getting better. Like there needed, was this this four year lens, period yeah. where uh, Sigma came out with the R series lens, and right. then everybody was just everybody. trying to to compete with that, and everybody was trying to figure it out. People on the internet saw that this uh, Sigma thirty five was like one of the highest rated ever ones um, on on right. DXL yeah, Mark. So much less expensive yeah. than these really really high end Zeiss and and Canon and everybody else competitors. And they're like, what's going on here? Yeah. Why why would I spend so much yeah. more for that lens? But there's other other things in there. Like it's easy to obsess about the technical numbers, but there's other stuff like if you look at pictures of the 50 sigma versus the 50 of other lenses you, you might see stuff that you like differently yeah yeah so i think that there's other things to those lenses that actually stood out to me more than whatever i would find on dxl mark so uh the more contrasty rendition deeper blacks um yeah so you look at uh, the Canon 35, this is like for the, the biggest photography nerds out there. So <laughs> I feel like I'm go kind of going um, a little bit like deep here on um, lens um, rendition and stuff and I'm um, just really kind of geeking out. But anyway, yeah, you look at the Canon uh, 35 millimeter 1.4 Mark II and then you look at the Sigma 35 and they're about the same sharpness, um, have you know similar distortion and DxO is going to put these, these guys really, really similar on a chart, but I like the Canon way more and it had nothing to do with um, what I saw in the chart there, you know, so it had more to do with the colors and um, kind of the, the overall contrast. Yeah, and sometimes there, yeah, there's just something different there that's intangible that you can't like explain through a number, but you can through your eyes. You're like, yeah, it's just the one for me. I just like this one better. And uh, yeah, the DxO thing can definitely become a hindrance to your photography because you might spend too much time obsessing about maybe small details that don't matter as much. And I, I think that, I mean, this isn't obviously the only reason I moved to Fuji, but it was a benefit of moving to Fuji is like, it's not on DxO, Mark. I can't spend forever obsessing about that stuff anymore. They just don't test, test those sensors. So that was kind of a benefit in, in one way is I don't spend nearly as much time looking at charts and comparing one lens to the other because they, they, just, they just don't have that information right now. If they did, maybe I would go back to it because it's like... Um, in one way, it's it's easy to quantify the value of a lens by some of these numbers, and you, and you can justify, like, oh, I should get this because it's this much better and that much better and in the charts. But, like, you never really know until you get home and you get out there in the world and you start playing with it, and you're like, okay, what is this thing going to do for me? What is, it gonna, is this going to improve something? Am I going to be happier with this? And at the end of the day, like, the DxO charts don't even matter. All that really matters is what you think of it, you know, how, how you feel about, your, about the picture that you made with the lens, you know? For sure. I think DxO is a good barometer for people getting into, into lenses for like the first time and like so they can look at this chart and they can listen to maybe people like me or you talk about rendition but it won't click with them but when they see a chart it will click with them and they'll be able to be like oh I want to try this out because it's rated the best or what, whatever else. So I think if you're if you're getting into photography maybe go check it out but once you've been in it for a while and you've tried out so many lenses, then you kind of know your preferences better and realize right. that the chart doesn't matter that much. Yeah, it doesn't matter as much to you because like what what you see through your photos, like through this lens and through that lens and the other lens, you're always going to have a preference. You're going to be I just prefer this one. This is the one for me. It's kind of like... Um, yeah. I guess some, some tangible things we could talk about that a DxO graph won't show you is the bokeh quality. <clears throat> and uh, micro contrast right. and colors and all of those things are subjective none of those you, then that's probably why they're not really on the charts because yeah there's a lot of discussion about those sorts of things between photographers and, and yeah you're going to be able to see how many aperture blades the lens has and you might give you a good idea of how the book is going to look but um every 
all the bokeh in whatever lens that you're shooting is going to just look a little bit different, and then it's just an eye test from there. So Right, and yeah. what do you like, and what is your preference and stuff? I, I feel like there's a lot of lenses that all look at the number of aperture blades and try to avoid, because I don't want to have, like such perfectly round book of all so if it has like i don't know 12 16 aperture blades that's mm -hmm. not gonna really be as appealing to me because that's gonna make an image that i'm not gonna like as much yeah the, the sony g master line is typically near the top of dxo mark and i don't prefer that line over the baddesses for uh reasons that aren't on the chart like uh, like the weight of the lenses and then also the bokeh quality i don't actually like the, the super rounded bokeh so. yeah yeah i'm the same way i feel like it looks too bubbly it's like Right yeah, tonight. the skin tones are a little bit more orange um, out of the right. G Masters, and it just it didn't vibe with me as well. And I ended up, you know, spending half as much on the lens that I like more, which was yeah, interesting. exactly, yeah, so, that can totally be, and it's lighter, yeah. and you don't have to worry about uh, as much insurance and stuff. And yeah. That kind of stuff. So I, I guess bottom line, try out the lenses. Don't focus too much on the charts, and go out there and shoot, test it in different environments, and. Maybe even test two lenses side by side if you get the chance because yeah, then you get the chance. Yeah, that'll really help you out. Like for me, I shoot two focal lengths. So um, if uh, if I want to try out like two different 85s, it's not that big of a deal for me. So Yeah, or if maybe if you have a buddy like like you and I, although now we yeah. shoot different kits. But once upon a time, we had yeah. the same kits. We could just trade we could back just, and yeah, forth. trade back our, our Canon lenses. So yeah. Yeah, yeah I, so. Stuff like that, it definitely helps you figure out what you like and what you don't like. And I feel like that is so much more valuable. Even sometimes I find, although it's always as different on Flickr, is I can go through and I can look at a, at a group on Flickr for whatever lens. And those are all pictures taken by that lens that are generally on mostly the same sensors, unless it's some kind of crazy vintage lens. But if it's made by a, a new manufacturer, and then I can get kind of an idea of what it like, it's like. And I can compare a lot of them, and I can be like, well, I most likely this like this one. I'm going to narrow it down to just this 150, 14, and I'm going to buy that lens, and I'm going to try it out a bunch and hope that's the right one and try to make more of an educated guess based off the images as much as the graphs. Because like, looking at those graphs, especially if you're just starting off, could be like totally meaningless. Like It's jargony. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people don't know that Flickr is still really active, and you can still pretty much find every single lens on there. Yeah, there's a lot it's of photographers that use it. I mean, I know I still use it for lots of stuff, and I'm on there. I mean, I, I didn't abandon Flickr. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Anything else you wanted to talk about on this? No, no. I so, but um, you know, bottom line, um, don't look at the charts too much. There's plenty of things you could be doing besides looking at those charts. Right. You could be uh, <laughs> looking at great photographs or. Um, going out there and making pictures. So. Right. Yeah, totally. Work. Yeah, don't spend too many hours looking at DXO and losing your mind. <laughs> <laughs>